Hey there everyone, Hitesh here and the world is entirely talking about Devin. How can I miss this? I also need to talk about it. But not from the perspective where I scare off the freshers, but actually from a perspective of somebody who has been writing code for almost a decade and somebody needs to take a senior take on what this all is going on. So that I can give you a proper perspective of where things are shifting and do you really need to worry about it and who are really worried with the Devin. First and foremost, I would love to accept the fact that it was great marketing. Without a doubt, it was a great, great marketing. While the whole another world was just naming everything around GPTs, chat GPT, auto GPT, this GPT and that GPT, one guy came up with a fantastic marketing scheme and just poked every single software engineer because they called their AI as the software engineer, the first AI software engineer. If they would have named this as uh, something GPT or a software GPT or maybe XYZ GPT, it wouldn't have made that much of the noise. But here we are. Since they called it as software engineer, a lot of software engineer took that as a personal, tweeted that out, and that's exactly the goal of marketing. First of all, let's poke the people enough uh, that they talk about us, and they successfully did it. But in this video, I would not like to panic out on this software GPT and the software engineer kind of a thing, but rather I would like to give you a fresh perspective on precisely the six points that I want to talk in this video. Probably not six, but actually nine. But six of them actually will uh, put a baseline on this and last three will give you a much more precise idea of should you be worried about that. Go ahead, sit back, watch and enjoy this video. If you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead, subscribe this video and we are putting up a target of the comments in this video as well. Just 200 comments and I would be super happy with that. So for this, first of all, let me just go ahead and share my screen so that we can have a discussion around it. So by this point, I'm pretty sure that you might have seen uh, the talk around the Devon. If you just search for it, the entire Twitter timeline is just all about the Devon. But I'm not interested in going into the Devon first. I would like to put up some perspective by talking about some of the pointers uh, which are really interesting here. First of all, if you're worried too much about will the AI take away my job or should I be even learning to code, should I start to learn code in this era? I think this is the most important era where you should focus more on learning the code because the problem statement that are going to be very, very basic and you shouldn't be spending your time will obviously be taken care by the AI. But the problem where AI is going to make a mess and the way how you are going to solve it, it requires more problem solving skills because these problems are meant to be solved by some of the engineers which are really great in problem solving. First of all, just look at this fact here. There is always usually uh, this kind of a group which talks about these kinds of hype things. And understandably, uh, the group is of freshers, somebody who is 5 plus years experience and somebody who is 10 plus a year experience. Now, the maximum of the noise around these things you will hear from this particular group. People who are freshers or are just on their very first job or very first freelancing job, they are understandably very, very scared. They think that, I'm just getting started or I'm about to get started or I've just started and now AI is able to do all of my job and uh, understandably you are very much afraid. But people who are in the category of 10 plus years, they are not afraid. Uh, not because they are highly skilled, because they understand that getting the precise uh, work from the client is really, really tough. Client even doesn't know what they require. The requirements are always ambiguous and have no idea what they really want us to solve. And coming to a point where we have to craft our problem as well and then craft a, so a solution, that requires a human intervention. So people who are 10 plus year experience will always say, don't worry, it's always great. You, you will be fine there. This is just another hype train. But people who are in the fresher zone or not even in the fresher zone, they are very afraid. Because it looks like that these demos can do all the job, they can build the snake game, they can build the website. What we are going to do? You are going to be actually solving the problem which is there. Zometo was not an easy problem to solve. Uber was not an easy problem to solve. And you cannot just prompt in, hey, build me an Uber. These problems and these companies were built over the years by retreating, resolving the problems. And some of the problems didn't have any existing solution at all. No blog post, no documentation, nothing existed. 
just a few years ago, there was a problem with the React that it was not that great in the SEO optimization. And somebody built server-side rendering for that. Somebody built Next.js and these things didn't even exist. So how the AI is going to solve this when there is no documentation? Uh, these problems are freshly being solved. Just a few years ago, we didn't have any databases which solves the problem of vector databases. But somebody built it out. That's where you shine and that's where the people who are 10 plus year experience are not worried because somebody will solve these problems. And you don't need to be always 10 years experience on that. And no matter how hard you try to uh, calm down these freshers, because they have their social media with them, they'll always tweet out about these panics and will create a panic hype that, hey, now the jobs are almost gone. And you will understand this because let's talk a little bit more about the next points. The next point is this one. This will calm you down a little bit. Just a few years ago, we saw the self-driving cars. And even I saw the protest around it, that self-driving cars are going to take the job of the actual drivers. And here we are. Now, all of the drivers are being replaced by the self-driving cars. You need to understand that technology is great. But sometimes, in fact, most of the time, technology do overpromise and doesn't deliver that much. And the time span of that delivery is so long that sometimes you even forget about it. I'm pretty sure most of you have forget about the self-driving cars and all these things. But I'm not saying that it will never arrive. Surely it will arrive, but it will be an assistant more than a driver. So that's exactly happening with the coding as well. I love coding. I do love AI as well. I enjoy AI. And these days I'm building a lot of my project with the help of AI. It's much faster, but sometimes it does some of the dumb jobs that I'm just like, leave it. I'm going to write it myself. So yes, this happens. It's a great assistant, but sometimes the assistant does a really dumb job. And you need to be on top of it on the skills that you have to figure out that this is a dumb job. I need to do better than this. And sometimes even it follows some of the bad practices and I have to make sure I correct it down. That's where now is the right time when you actually show much more skills. Another thing is this last point. You might have heard about this thing, AutoGPT. If you haven't heard about it, let me just give you a brief summary about it. AutoGPT was similar kind of a project that now we are calling as Devin. You just give it a prompt, it just look on the internet about whole thing and just builds you a software. Where is it right now? <laughs> yes, of course, it was very well overpromised. It does some of the job really great. I'm not bashing it down, but it's not that great that you can just ask it to solve all the problems because sometimes even problem is the ambiguous one. If somebody would have named Devin as Devin GPT, it wouldn't have made that much of noise. But when you name it as Devin, the next gen AI software engineer, of course, it's going to poke a lot of people. So that's what I'm trying to remind you that yes, auto GPT is exactly same. Nobody cares about it right now. Eventually, when the Devin is going to be publicly released, then we are going to be properly seeing that what's happening. But I'll talk about that in a second. Another thing is this NFT, uh, this distribution thing, and a lot of coins. Uh, just a few years ago, everybody was telling me that every single solution comes from this entire Web3 solution. You ask any problem to the fresher and they'll give you the solution, do NFT. If there is a property dispute, do, NF do NFT these kinds of things. Do these uh, Web3 solutions. Everything was just build a ledger, build a ledger. Where is it right now? The hype eventually goes out. The software still remains, the engineer still remains. Everybody told me that, hey, Tesh, this whole monetary system that you're seeing right now, rupees, dollars, this will be gone. We will eliminate the banks. And all things that are going to remain is you will have your own wallet. You will be able to do transaction in Bitcoin. And that's it. Where is it right now? Of course, sometimes the software industry overpromise, underdeliver. That always happens. And this exactly happened. Now, can you right now just focus out little bit more and zoom out a little bit and just imagine this thing that if this would be named as Devin GPT, would this much be the chaos or the whole chaos is not about the capabilities of the software because if it would be that much capable, release it in the public, let us let us use it. Because we saw the same hive with the chat GPT as well. The promise was that just with the prompts, you will be able to build the entire software. Some people even showed the demos as well, that I built this entire website and the backend and everything with the chat GPT prompts. Were you able to, can you do this right now? The software is available to you. 
And we see all the time the tweets that it's hallucinating, sometimes it's not even writing the code, just giving me the task to do, not no code at all. And yes, this, this happens. When the software gets released in the public, it's a completely different, wild jungle of people, how they are going to be using it. But in order to understand this, we need to discuss on the third and the last point, which is this one. The VC, the benchmark, and the public release. First of all, just understand, whenever there is such company like ChatGPT, or even the company behind the Devon, there is a lot of VC money involved in that. I, even I tweeted it out as well, that when the VCs are involved, sometimes, not always, but sometimes, these VCs have no idea what the thing is happening or where we should put the money. They just take a lot of bet and just assume that somebody is going to just make a crack and will just make a lot of money. And when the VC money is involved, uh, there is a lot of gaming of the system. Yes, this happens. <laughs> this happens. I've seen it personally. I've seen it close. And I'm still witnessing it. VC money, when it gets involved, there is a whole different dynamics of how things are being produced, presented. And people end of the day wins who are the best presenters, who are the best marketers who can present the thing in such a way that this is going to revolutionize the world, this is the new breakthrough, gets the maximum amount of VCs and maximum amount of uh, rounds that they can raise. I saw it personally happening in the edtech space and I have seen it personally in the fintech space as well. And now it's happening in the AI space and we all are witnessing this. I don't have personal experience of the friends who are raising money just with the name of AI, but I can see it. I can see it very clearly that this is happening. This is absolutely clear. Another thing that you'll see quite often is the benchmark. From the day one, I was never ever a fan of benchmarks. Whether you are testing your computers, whether you are testing your CPUs, GPUs, or even the softwares, benchmarks are the worst way to rely on anything for the performance, whether it's great or not. Because benchmarks are just very controlled environment and everybody knows that what are these controlled environments? What should we give this to give us the best benchmark? And that's the reason why when you actually use a product or even a laptop, some of the laptops which don't have that high of the benchmark, they're great. They're very productive. And for your use case, they work really better than the higher benchmark ones. So I've never trusted the benchmark and probably I'll never will be. The real test is actually the public release, the final one. And we all are going to be witnessing it very soon. And I'm pretty sure the amount of hype that this Devon has made, there will be some amount of money to actually use this or try this out. And that's exactly where I'm predicting this, this hype will become real. That whether the software is good or another chat GPT version. So again, I think somebody needs to take a proper take on this one as from a senior engineer or senior, somebody who has seen a lot of uh, these things come and go, that you don't have to worry that much. Of course, coming back onto the point, this, yes, this group will still be in the panic mode, no matter how much you try to convince them, there is a reason behind that as well. Because if you see on the YouTube itself, there are enough of the video which actually grabs your attention with these thumbnails and the hot takes that, hey, I'm also even worried about my job with this new chat GPT, or as we call it as Devin. If I would have made this video as, yes, it's scary, and even I'm worried about this one, I think people would have tweeted more than that, hey, even Hitesh is more worried about this Devin, and if Hitesh is worried, I think there is something serious. So that would have gained much more attention. But I think somebody who takes this kind of a proper take on the real world situation, obviously it's not gonna get that much hype. But I think somewhat it's my responsibility to give you a real world take and a bigger perspective of the picture rather than just get worried about. And for, uh, I just still remember that during, just after the COVID time, I was convincing everybody that, you know what, this Web3 and all of these things, it's good. It's not gonna replace anything. And a lot of people didn't believe it. And exactly I'm convincing everybody now that AI is just another hype and rush and a lot of people are making money on it and they have to convince their v VCs that, yeah, it's all good. It's all under control and that's why these hypes are creating. I'm not saying that that whole thing is just a, just a shajam. No, it's not. It's not a facade. AI is there. Definitely, it's helping us. It's assisting us. But the benchmark and everything that you are seeing right now, I think that is a little bit overhyped. In fact, a lot overhyped. So that is all. That is all my small take about what's happening in the Devon and how much you should be worried about. 
If you're fresher, my advice is go ahead, still work on your skills and you need even much more higher of a skill to solve even the mess that the AI is going to make. But I don't think so. It's it's going to take any job or it's, go it's, it's going to be staying here with us. It's going to help us to be more productive. And that's it. I'm not much worried about it. That's all that's going to happen. That's it for this video. My hot take on the Devin uh, fiasco that is going on. Let's go ahead and catch up in another such video.